G'day folks, it's Rob here and welcome to our very wet backyard farm. Uh, we've had a few people message us asking us how we're going due to Cyclone Debbie. I uh, just want to let you folks overseas know we're about 1200 kilometres or 750 miles south from the area that was devastated by Debbie up around Air. So yeah, we're, we're totally fine. The worst thing that's come out of it for us, well actually it's rather good, is we've had as you can hear, water running off the tarp. We've had around about 110 millimetres worth of rain um, from the low that has resulted from the cyclone. So that's slowly coming down the coast. Uh, what I thought I'd do is just give you a, um, a little bit of an update um, while I'm out here, uh, just letting you guys know that we're fine. But you know, please do have your thoughts in mind for all those folks up there. So I might pop a link down in the description for anyone who's looking to um, help those folks out. So anyway, um, I'll give you a little bit of a tour and uh, I'll let you in on a little bit of a stuff up I did yesterday with the aquaponics. So just to give you a little bit of a catch up on what's been going on, um, yeah, the blue java banana tree has, or plant I should say, has come down. It actually uh, broke. It snapped in half uh, last Saturday while I was finishing off the sweet potato clip. Um, came out the back and the bunch was just sitting on the ground down there. Most of the bananas look fine, so yeah, we're pretty lucky in that respect. Hopefully we'll be able to get a few ripen up, and the ones that don't, you know, we're just going to treat them like a, a plantain or a green banana. And yeah, I'm really interested in trying fried banana. Just in here too, before I forget, that uh, stump of that uh, original banana plant is pretty much all just going to stay there. Someone pointed out that it will be holding moisture and nutrients that will feed this one here. This is the one I chopped back to hopefully give some energy to this one. So it will um, supply some energy to this plant and yeah, hopefully it will um, prosper and we'll get a bunch of bananas out of that. I do need to fill up the soil in there with some compost as well. These suckers, this sucker here will actually be chopped out again. Um, that's one that I chopped off below ground level and I thought I um, yeah, killed it but I hadn't. These other ones around the back, I've taken a few small suckers and I have some more. Um, these ones we will be keeping. Um, I've just got to wait until I can get some potting mix and once we get that sorted, yep, these guys will be off. Uh, just around in here, um, yeah. Had a bit of a uh, stuff up with the aquaponics. I was filming a um, ginger clip. I've had loads of people ask me how to grow ginger. So I've um, shot a bit of a clip for this weekend. And while I was filming, the tripod was sitting round about there. And I was getting a lot of noise from the fish tank. So what I did was I grabbed the air stone from this one that has no fish in it. Popped it in there. Had them both bubbling away. And I turned the water off into the tank. And then I was impatient, couldn't wait for all the water to drain out, so I turned this valve off. So all was good, I shot my clip, I'm busy editing it at the moment for the weekend. But when I'd finished, all I did was I turned the inlet in on and I didn't turn the outlet back on. So about 20 minutes after I'd gone up to the house, I heard this funny growling noise from out the back. And it was the pump in the sump tank running dry. So I quickly came out and rectified the problem by pulling out all the, um, the bells from the grow beds and that flushed enough water in there just to cover the pump and kept it happy. So just a, a bit of a brain fart, so to speak. I just forgot to do something that was basic and I could have ended up uh, burning out a pump. The fish would have been fine. There's loads of air in there. So but as a result of having 110 mil or just over 4 inches fall in your yard, we've um, totally filled up the sump tank to overflowing would you believe and all the bell siphons are back in what that means is we've flushed more um, sodium out of the system and the rain having a lower pH has brought the pH in the system down I was out here just before and I had the little blue lab meter in there and I was reading around about six point I think it was six 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 seven whereas the water um, when I shut up shop last night uh, was seven one so the reason it's so high is this tank over here was totally emptied and filled up with fresh water so we could reduce the um, sodium level in the system which there's a whole backstory to that I'll put a link up there and you can suss that out basically had crookfish added salt uh, plants don't like salt need to get it out now the fish are healthy so uh, this water here is a very high pH very low sodium so what I'm doing is slowly introducing it into the system as you can see there's a little trickle there and that will hopefully bring the pH up in the main water um, in the system and yeah also the sodium down because we've dumped a whole lot of water out so I hope that wasn't too confusing folks 
Uh, as for the fish in here, ah, the fish are doing well. Can't really focus on them down the bottom there, sorry guys, with the phone camera. So, there you go. As for other plants around the system, the um, little Malabar spinach has taken off, it's doing rather well. This Egyptian spinach isn't looking too happy at the moment. So I'm actually going to cut that back anyway because I have a load of tomato seedlings, one of which is going in a root pouch just over there. That was supposed to happen yesterday, but I was trying to beat the rain, so I spent the day filming bits and pieces for the ginger clip. The other plants in this bed that are doing well are the wombok. Obviously, they're not looking too crash hot due to the amount of sodium in the system, but they are putting on a little bit of growth, so I'm happy with that. Hopefully, um, now the sodium levels are decreasing, they'll pick up a bit. Uh, the other plants in the system still growing rapidly. Um, the little moringas, they were doing, they started to pick up. And this one's still going, but the one, oh that's parsley by the way, I think I mislabeled it in the last clip. Uh, the one around the back here has pretty much well um, died right back. So yeah, a little bit of a loss is why it was picking up and then started to die off again. The thyme hasn't died completely off, so I think flushing some of the salt out of the system has definitely helped. Um, it's also helped the ginger, because I've noticed this one here has come back, and we've had some new um, growth on this one here. And, oh, I didn't notice that one before, a new little growth there. And this one here is picked up as well, so... We're definitely not going to get a bumper harvest out of this ginger this season, but yeah, that was pretty much all down to um, a combination of the sodium levels and I'd say that tree blocking out a lot of the um, sun. So, everything else is looking okay. The turmeric has um, sent up a little um, offshoot, so it's, it's divided and grown a little bit. So these are my little self-watering seed starters. Um, this one here is full of dwarf scornsby or, or um, KY1. I the seed was um, three or four years old, so I put a load in there just to make sure we got at least one or two. And as you can see, good germination rate. Um, I've got a mate, David, who is after some of these seeds, so I might divide one or two out and give them to him. And I'm going to put one in a root pouch and one in the aquaponics just to see how they go. Uh, here we have some broccoli F1. Um, I think I showed these guys to the guy, folks on Patreon. I uh, planted out six broccoli F1. Um, basically, it's they do better in our warmer climate, so I thought I'd have a crack. We've got five that have germinated, and the sixth one hasn't, so, you know, we'll see how they go. These guys are destined to go out the front. Um, actually, I don't know. These might end up in the hoop house yet. We'll just wait and see. And we have the Kajari melon. I did a germination test on ten, and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten germinated, so 100% germination rate on them. So, um, yeah, folks I, who I've said can have some of this seed, they'll be getting some very soon. Yeah, all in all, pretty happy with the way the um, seed starts are going. Actually, while I think of it, I do have some other seeds on the go at the moment. We have our um, carrots. So we've had a really good germination rate with these guys. What I am having to do, though, is come through. Hello, Mr. Skink. Where have you gone? Oh, there you are. Well, I won't disturb him too much. But, yeah, we're coming through here and just pulling out anything that doesn't look carrot-like. Um, <laughs> there is going to be a load of this red amaranth because we had red amaranth growing in here as a volunteer as I let it go fallow for a little while so try and pull them out without any carrots there's some more random little seeds popping up over here so trying to keep it nice and clean just coming out every couple of days and pulling these guys so hopefully we only have carrots come through yeah I'm pretty happy with the way the carrots are going so this here is our Chinese Celtus. It actually puts out a very pretty display of flowers when it's not raining. We've um, collected a few seeds off these guys already, and a lot of these guys will go into the kitty for future giveaways and things like that. Um, yeah, it's done really well. I'm sort of a little bit disappointed I didn't get to try its stalk, um, because that's what you eat, the, just the stalk of the plant. But, you know, in saying that, look at all this potential new life I have here. So we'll be eating Celtus in no time flat. I think it should grow through our winter here, so pretty chuffed about that. Back at the aquaponics, and I thought I'd show you this plant. This is the Chinese amaranth. We've been really enjoying this one as a seed, uh, sorry, as a leaf um, crop, just for salads mainly. I don't think we've cooked much of it up at all, to tell you the truth. But, um, yeah, just rubbing my hands along there, you can see the little black seeds. 
that are coming out. I collected a whole load yesterday, mainly because I knew the rain was going to knock this around and the seeds are so delicate we'd lose a lot in the ground there. Which is fine for us because we'll get to transplant out volunteers, but for you folks who I want to share the seeds to, it makes it a little bit harder. So yeah, I collected a good load of that. And just to show you the um, sweet potatoes that I'll be planting out. Oh, that's my dosing bucket for the aquaponics. Um, these are a couple that David gave me. Uh, he's a, a hobby market gardener. And um, yeah, he's two varieties here. Pretty sure that's a Beauregard. And this is the red skin, even though it doesn't look it at the moment. Red skin, white flesh variety. So these guys here, um, just sitting out here in the damp, hopefully put on some nice healthy um, growth. And I'm going to try planting them as is in a root pouch that goes along the fence and I've got a couple more in a bag that I'm going to grow actually I might take the slips from these ones and I'm going to um, trial and growing the others by slips just see if we can get a bit of a comparison between the two different growing styles and these guys here are the um, sweet potato slips I took from last week's um, clip that actually it's been a week seven days so that's how well these guys set out roots um, from the cuttings in seven days. So thank you very much again, Maya, for letting me use your mug. Um, but yeah, these plants are looking pretty healthy. So they'll go out um, at the back stairs, I think. I've got to find somewhere to fit them in. So once again, thank you to everyone who is concerned for our welfare, um, sending us messages. Uh, please keep in mind, it did happen 1,200 kilometres north or 750 miles north from here. Um, they're the guys who are really copying it. Um, not only the cyclone, but now the rain that's following. So please keep those guys in your thoughts. Um, we're just reaping the benefits of the low that's coming down the coast afterwards. I mean, the ground's going to be definitely recharged with water. Uh, also, too, for you folks on Patreon, um, I've got a little bit of a sneak peek clip coming out um, later on today for you guys. Uh, just having a little bit of a look at the ginger, so keep an eye out for that. I do hope you're all well and happy and that you've enjoyed this little bit of a catch up in our small little backyard farm and around the aquaponics as well. And I'll catch you later. Cheers, all.